The Beauty and the Monster by Stephanie Felicite de John Lee. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Beauty and the Monster, a comedy. The Persons, Sabina. Read by Christine G. Fanor. Read by David Olson. A genius. Fadima. Read by Michaela. Friend of Sabina. Narrated by Mary Kay. The scene is in the palace of the genius. Act One. Fanor appears, holding Sabina by her robe, while she seems to fly from him, turning away her head with horror. Ah, Sabina, stay. I pray you, one instant, deign to hear me but a moment. Let me go. Let me go. If you command me, I obey. Your least desires are supreme laws for the unfortunate Fenor, but when he presumes for the first time to beg a moment's conversations, will you have the cruelty to refuse? Sabina, aside. Unfortunate Fenor, how I pity him. Fenor, letting go of Sabina's robe. Sabina, you are free. I wish not to owe anything to violence. You may still fly me, if you please. Sabina, still turning away her head. But what have you to say to me? Oh, heavens! You tremble. My hideous aspect must inspire you with aversion, Sabina. You may hate me, but alas, wherefore should you dread me? I do not hate you. Well, then, my wishes are gratified. The happiness of being beloved is not for me. I do not pretend to it, but learn, however, that this horrid figure, which you dare not look on, conceals a feeling, delicate and faithful heart. Sabina, aside. How affecting his voice! Wherefore must— She looks at him and screams with fright. Oh, heavens! She takes some steps to fly from him. Fenor, wishing to stop her. Ah, Sabina, calm your fears. In the name of heaven— let me go she escapes i began to soften her her soul was opening to compassion but a look a single look has undone all and can i still continue to hope cruel fairy thou enjoyest the excess of my sorrow thy power superior to mine has hitherto condemned me to support life under this hideous form and I cannot resume my original figure, but by making myself beloved, and in this frightful shape gaining a heart which has been hitherto insensible. Ah, Sabina, if you knew my secret, or if I was permitted to tell it, but the fatal oracle forbids. Alas, how unhappy am I, and the greatest, most cruel part of my sufferings is loving, as no one ever loved before. He sinks upon a chair oppressed by grief fedima without being perceived sabina told me he was here ha he is so fenor raising himself up oh fedima what is sabina doing i come from her to tell you that she is exceedingly afflicted at having left you in the hasty rude manner she did and why did she not come and tell me so herself is that your complaisance to me fedima i beg your pardon i perfectly know how much i am indebted to you alas if it was not for you what would become of me come come i forgive you i have no resentment and to prove it to you i must tell you that the short conversation you have just had with sabina has worked wonders how can i think so after the proofs of aversion she has showed at quitting me but she is sorry for it is not that a great deal but she never can get the better of the dread she has in looking at me only think it is but eight days since you carried us off and to speak plain i must say that more than eight days are necessary to be reconciled to your figure if you had not admitted me into your confidence and won me to your interest a long time before you brought us hither though i am not so timid as sabina i believe i should not have had courage to look at you this moment you have been the friend of sabina from her infancy you are acquainted with her heart and her sentiments tell me then sincerely charming fedima do you think at present that the hopes you have sometimes given me are not absolutely chimerical 
at this rate i must always repeat the same thing to you well then sabina has sensibility a delicate understanding and a grateful heart merit and virtue must make deep impressions on a temper such as hers and you have everything to hope from time but notwithstanding the entertainments and pleasures i procure for her she seems to be dissatisfied in this palace she is delighted however in being in it an orphan and tyrannized over by cruel and unjust relations she was about to be sacrificed to their ambition when fortunately you came and carried us off sabina was going to be united with a person who was not worthy of her and whom she did not esteem but alas perhaps since she has seen me she regrets the loss of him you may rest assured that she every instant rejoices at the happiness of having escaped and yet the object of her hatred possessed all the charms of the most seducing figure but he was deficient in understanding and more so in delicacy he is an ignorant rustic without one promising quality and sabina thought him hateful you know fadima what are the reasons of my attachment to sabina it was not the charms of her person which produced that sentiment so deeply impressioned upon my mind o oh, happy day never absent from my thoughts when by my art invisible to human eyes i stopped in that meadow where the young companions of sabina were celebrating her birthday melancholy had overspread the countenance of your friend which at first struck me and melted me into compassion she withdrew from the crowd and with you only sat down at the foot of a palm tree while she disclosed her mind to you and you heard our discourse i did not lose a single word sabina lamented her fate and the ill-suited match to which her friends obliged her to consent alas said she the authors of my being are now no more an unhappy orphan i no longer depend but upon relations who are insensible to my prayers and tears young and without experience i ought to respect their authority and the first duty of my age is obedience i have lost the guides given me by nature and the law has assigned others to whom i must submit if they abuse their power they will be more to be pitied than i i shall become their victim but i shall have done my duty and surely there are no sorrows but must find comfort in conscious virtue and innocence sabina said all this but in a manner a thousand times more affecting a deluge of tears rushed down her cheeks yes i recollect she was in tears she then remained some time silent <laughs> i admire your memory for in short it is two long months since that conversation and you remember the smallest circumstances even the palm tree ah uh, that palm tree i think i see it still it supported sabina's head sabina's hair touched its bark and against what tree did i lean in the whole meadow i saw but one palm tree <laughs> oh now you are in fault let us try again what did i say to sabina nothing i believe <laughs> nothing pass two hours with sabina and not answer her but hush i hear a noise somebody comes tis she it is sabina i leave you yes for a moment but don't go to a distance i shall call you back presently remember fadima that i have deposited the dearest interests of my life in your hands farewell i see sabina he goes out fadima alone poor fanor how affecting his discourse his goodness his benevolence and understanding should make his deformity be forgotten sabina entering in deep thought such virtue deserves another fate sabina i did not observe you fadima you are very pensive deeply engaged yes i have reason to be so i was thinking of fanor well what then fadima we have been eight days in this palace until now we do not know whose it is this palace belongs to fanor hear me i just now for the first time walked out of the pavilion in which we live and which is parted from the rest of this vast palace by a large garden after having crossed it i found myself in an immense gallery judge of my surprise when i saw a prodigious crowd of men women and children all different clothed probably they are subjects of the genius no i inquired and am informed that they are only travellers how travellers we did not take notice fadima of the affecting inscription which fanor has caused to be engraved over the gate of this palace the gate is always open and you may read over it 
to all the unhappy oh all is explained then if it had not been by chance i should still have been ignorant of the sacred asylum in which we live fano would never have informed us sabina you were in tears i do not desire to prevent it ah oh, fano unhappy fano heaven has been unkind to you must heaven grant every gift fanor has been favoured with virtue and understanding but that hideous figure sabina ask the unfortunate inhabitants of this palace if that figure which is so disgusting to you prevents them from loving fanor they ought to love him gratitude should oblige them and you do you owe nothing to fanor he secures the unfortunate because he pities them your misfortunes likewise drew his attention and he carried you off that he might rescue you from cruel violence in short in becoming acquainted with your virtue he attaches himself to you and you cannot love him alas i love him when i do not see him such a manner of loving is quite captivating if he had no other attachment to you but one of those contemptible whims founded solely on your exterior charms you would do right to say to him my figure pleases you and i am sorry for it because yours is so frightful to me he then could not reply but it is your understanding that pleases him your disposition which has captivated him if you were ugly he would still love you ah uh, if he were only ugly in fact he possesses all those qualities by which you have charmed him but you are insensible to them insensible no i am not but i never can accustom myself to look at him i conceive that at first he terrifies but when his goodness and gentle temper are known is it possible to fear him besides though it be true that his figure is very singular yet i have seen some more disgusting he does himself justice at least he is not a fool a fool how silly you are why should not he be like many others who are scarce more favoured by nature you was with him just now what did he say to you that you were the cause of his unhappiness that is a great unhappiness to me i am certain he is not far off do you think so shall i call him i dare not come come how childish i think i hear him yes it is he sabina you turn pale no no tis nothing fadima do not leave me here he comes i pray you constrain yourself and remain for a moment sabina goes to the opposite side fanor approaching gently she is going to fly from me again fanor i was going in search of you i thought i heard my name pronounced and you tremble and are speechless i am indeed fadima looking attentively at sabina and fanor this outside promises well the conversation will be spirited to sabina if i constrain you i will withdraw sabina holding her ah oh, fadima sabina say would you have me retire no do not go away shall we have some entertainment to-day i await sabina's commands i have been just now enjoying the greatest pleasure i have tasted in this palace you have hitherto deprived me of it fanor i must complain of what can there be a more pleasing entertainment than to see benevolence afflicting the unhappy and to hear gratitude applauding virtue can there be happiness comparable with that of being approved by sabina by those we love fadima explains what i dare not fanor you are too timid ah sabina well why so silent fanor what sabina do my ears deceive me my sentiments are not hateful to you you allow me then to take the liberty of declaring them let me never be accused of ingratitude alas i accuse only my unhappy fate now we are fallen back to our former sadness lo to sabina speak to him come make an effort at least look at him oh heavens what do you say fadima no sabina do not look at me i shall lose all my happiness sabina who looks at him with timidity and then upon the ground you see fano that you are unjust ah may you still prove it to me he approaches towards sabina she starts and takes some steps to fly from him he draws back and sabina remains motionless fadima after a short silence they are both astonished well then or i who have no dread of you desire that you will give me your arm and conduct me to the play you promised me an entertainment and positively i must have it come along sabina you may follow your friend without fear 
i shall remain here by no means you must do the honours of the entertainment for my part i insist upon it you carried me off as well as sabina i was as unhappy as she so that i have the same title to your complaisance besides i think i deserve some little preference you do not appear handsome in my eyes but i think you truly amiable she takes hold of his arm sabina will you come with us why don't you answer oh you are in the pouts sabina aside how she teases me adieu sabina sabina vexed since i incommode you i pray you go fadima go fanor fanor quitting fadima's arm oh heaven sabina can you believe it what means this i never saw you in these whims before come come what is here to do will you go to the play for my part i will not lose it to your fancy yes i will go if fano will go too ah sabina i am too sensible of the value of such goodness but to profit by it would be perhaps to abuse it pardon me i can see into your heart though i have done nothing for you yet you imagine you owe me gratitude you strive to combat the just dread which my countenance inspires but i suffer much more from your uneasiness than my own and i cannot endure the constraint you impose upon yourself you reign here you are the only sovereign of this palace rule over all in it and fly me if you are free and content fenor will be too happy thou most generous of men how contemptible should i be in my own eyes if from henceforth i could look upon you with uneasiness no fano gratitude can never be a painful duty to the heart of sabina very well let us be gone we will finish this conversation at the play she takes fanor by the arm sabina if you want a conductor fanor can oh heavens take care what you say sabina looking at fanor with timidity but without terror fanor will you give me your arm ah uh, if you pity me if you are concerned for me i repeat it to you i presume to beg sabina you will not constrain yourself upon my account sabina taking him by the arm well i obey you it is without struggle or constraint ah sabina would to heaven you could read what passes in my heart you will give us an account of that at the play come let us go aside and going out thank heaven sabina begins to reconcile to him End of Act One Act Two of The Beauty and the Monster by Stephanie Felicite de Genlis. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two you must allow that it is impossible to be more pleasing more interesting i shall never recover from my surprise i could not have thought it possible for me to have accustomed myself to his figure that is quite natural you would not hear him you could not therefore know either the excellence of his disposition or the charms of his conversation he has such goodness such delicacy he has even something very agreeable in his manner how affecting the sound of his voice so then you are no longer afraid i esteem him too much to fear him but that concern with which he inspires me makes me feel something sad and painful which i cannot describe yesterday i had only that compassion for him which is due to the unfortunate and i was grieved for his hard fate but that pity did not occasion the melancholy which engrosses all my thoughts at present i think of him in spite of me and i cannot think of him but with inexpressible sorrow this is very extraordinary yesterday he has much to be pitied and to-day that you behave well to him he is satisfied why then does your pity increase when his sorrows are lessened there is an idea presents itself incessantly to my imagination and torments me it is impossible to see him for the first time without astonishment and terror well what is it to him if you have entirely got the better of that first impression i wish to have justice done him i am grieved to think that the aspect of such a virtuous benevolent being should inspire more dread and terror than the fight of one of those savage animals in whom a blind ferocity is their sole instinct 
this is a dreadful idea and i cannot think of it without shuddering but if you determine to remain in this palace fanor will never leave it he will see you only and for your sake will renounce all the world i do not yet know what my destiny may be i do not know fedima whether i ought to accept for life the asylum that is afforded us in this place if you leave it what will become of you i do not know but it must be friendship and not necessity that can make me determined to remain here but will fanor consent to separate himself from you fanor is too generous to make any attempt upon our liberty for my part i find myself so well here that i am greatly inclined to remain what fedima without me i shall remain to console fanor console him i have sensibility he is grateful my friendship will atone for your ingratitude and in this manner my dear sabina i shall make amends for your injustice so you need not constrain yourself how different are our tempers fedima everything affords you a subject of raillery by no means i do not rally i thought you did let us break off this conversation aside i do not know what is the matter with me i find myself out of humour you seem thoughtful very true i am so do you wish to be alone just as you please and you till evening sabina where are you going for my part i am not thoughtful i love to chat i'll go and find fanor as you think proper but i hope you will not acquaint him with the conversation we have had just now oh i am discreet i promise you i will not mention it that is all i desire but what will you say to him then you are very curious what is it a mystery perhaps oh i have no desire to discover it i assure you if that is the case i shall be silent sabina aside i can hold no longer farewell sabina when your reverie is over you will call me aside i will now go to fanor and give him some useful advice she goes out sabina alone after a short silence i could restrain myself no longer i am glad she is gone and is this fedima is this the friend which was always so ready to sacrifice everything to my happiness what an astonishing change it seems she prefers fanor to me i feel myself quite oppressed she sits down my heart is filled with bitter affliction and i cannot myself unravel what passes there i really do not know yes i will leave this palace fedima may remain without me but to-morrow perhaps this very day i withdraw from hence never to return fedima will console fanor they will both forget me and after all i shall be the only one to be pitied alas i deserved another fate i deserved other friends i have known misfortune but i never suffered what i endure at present i am frightened at the thought of it somebody comes oh heaven tis fanor she falls back upon a chair fanor aside i will follow fedima's advice and see what effect pity can have upon a heart of such sensibility he makes some steps forward and stops sabina will you give me leave to approach sabina rising yes come fanor i want to speak with you a moment what have you to say to me sabina what are your commands sabina aside i cannot speak to him i feel myself abashed aloud fanor i am afraid to distress you there is a question i dare not ask would to heaven i could divine what you wish sabina your desires should be prevented i am attached to you by the sincerest gratitude but after all i cannot promise you i will always remain in this palace fanor will you leave me at liberty to quit it i understand you and i will not complain of the severe destiny which i see awaits me this palace open to the unhappy is an asylum not a prison you are not only at liberty but you reign in it i am nothing here but an unfortunate wretch submissive to whatever laws you please to dictate and ready to banish myself from hence for your satisfaction but i beg at least you will do justice to my sentiments and not consider me either as a traitor or a ravishener you a tyrant you fanor oh heaven do you think me capable of entertaining the least doubt of your generosity alas i may be at variance with myself i may be inconsistent and irresolute but no fanor i never can be unjust to you 
know then all my soul i am but too sensible of the effect which my presence must produce i know the invincible obstacle which a dreadful deformity opposes to my happiness i never entertained a foolish hope of its being in my power to please you and engage you to unite your destiny to mine i have merited your esteem that is sufficient and after having obtained the only good that i could presume to expect i ought to forget myself and think only of you you terrify me to what does this discourse lead fanor what is your purpose to make you absolute mistress of your destiny and to free you forever from what can neither constrain or displease you receive this box it contains a precious ring by putting which upon your finger you will find yourself transported to whatever place you choose and there by the power of this same ring everything you wish will be realized palaces gardens containing whatever is most beautiful in art or nature of which you will be the sole mistress take back your gifts and deign to allow me to remain with you no do not despise the last homage of so sincere a passion farewell sabina think sometimes on the unhappy fenor he goes out sabina alone stop stop he escapes from me fanor fanor i call in vain oh heavens a secret terror freezes my senses and renders me motionless his last homage what means that mysterious expression what did he intend to say i shudder some confused ideas have suddenly started to disturb my brain perhaps this box which he has left in spite of me contains an explanation of those foreboding words which upsets me i dare not open it she lays it on the table ah let me run to find fanor he alone can save me from this distress sabina where are you running ah fadima have you seen fanor i have just left him well then i know what present he has made you and i come to ask what use you intend to make of it i met fanor distracted out of his mind the wildness of his manner frightened me i wanted to speak with him he shunned me he fled from me and quitted the palace in bidding me a sorrowful adieu what do i hear oh heavens he has left the palace where is he how do i know a thought strikes me with that ring which he left me i can transport myself to wherever he is and there i wish to be she takes the box and opens it here is the ring but what is this i see writing the writing will inform you of his destiny ah oh, fatima i tremble come read alas what am i to learn from this she reads aloud i wish to free you from a hateful object i know that my presence must be disagreeable to you and i cannot endure life absent from you i therefore renounce it without reluctance farewell sabina receive the last adieu of the faithful and affectionate fanor sabina having read it oh i die she faints in the arms of fadima oh heavens what do i see sabina sabina he is no more leave me fadima your cares are in vain life is hateful and last when too late i find my heart oh fanor i have dug your grave and my own the wretched sabina will immediately follow you yes fanor i loved you i cannot exist without you while she pronounces these last words soft music is heard behind the stage what do i hear the music continues the scene changes and fanor appears at the bottom in his proper figure seated on a throne of flowers where am i what object is this i see fanor running to throw himself at the feet of sabina ah uh, sabina my dear sabina recollect fanor by the excess of his tenderness fanor oh heavens the oracle is fulfilled i resume my original form and it is to sabina i owe my life and happiness oh fanor how pleasant to dedicate our life to him for whom we would sacrifice it what a happy day my dear fadima my dear fadima you increased our happiness by sharing it and i what do i not owe her be always happy and all my wishes will be gratified she addresses herself to the audience ye feeling virtuous hearts never complain of your fate and may this example teach you to know that goodness and benevolence are the surest means of pleasing 
and the only claims to love. Thin. End of Act Two. End of The Beauty and the Monster by Stephanie Felicite de Jean Lee.